so today we're going to look at the Commodore or the C64 Maxi as a lot of people are calling it or the C64 and um, we've had a look at the the model from a slightly different perspective but looking at um, comments and questions about this machine people seem to be quite interested in whether or not the sound that it produces uh, the emulation of the SID chip is actually the emulation of the original SID chip or the later one which was used in the 64C. Now without actually looking at the code the only way I can do it is to analyze the sound from the machines itself from an original C64 and also this C64 the new one because you know, to my mind, uh, the C64, the new Commodore version, is um, very good, and the emulation of the sound is very good. And to most people, it'd be hard pushed to tell the difference. But it'd be nice to find out how close they got it. Because I said in my previous video, a few people commented, or a few reviewers commented rather, about the slight lag on the sound. And really and truly, it's that small that 99.9% .9 of people will never ever notice any difference. And people who are new to this platform will never ever know any difference. So I'm going to have a look at it, but I'm also going to have a look at the... C64 Maxi or the C64 as people are calling it from a slightly different point of view of somebody coming to this machine for the first time. Okay, so let's have a look. This is my first time using the new C64. I'm going to try out the games and see what what it's like. First time. F7, F7, F7. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Ow, yow, yow. Join the other way up. Um, yeah, that's a good. How do we complete this game? Bro, it's so hard. Oh, let me, let me move. Let me move. Game of first train. Oh, maybe you have to move the ball and push fire at the same time. That's what the game is. Don't do that. What? What happened? Game over. Bye. I jumped. I want, I want these hurt you. How's the game over? F2? What was happening then? Oh, there you go. Oh, that was. No, 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 no. My life. Sounds this game, but this is a car type. Light color, begin race. I'm a broom on the cycle. Oh, you hold this. Oh 
Monty on the line. I thought I didn't know he was on here. I was like, it's way more easy on here, isn't it? Give me this ass. Give me this ass. <gasps> don't get squished. I don't want Monty to get squished. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Wrong way. Wrong way. Yes, bro. This is it. Oh, no. Oh, wait. Jump. Oh, yay. Let me have this mob. Thanks for the mob. This car. Why do we do this level? It goes so fast. Wait, I know the trick. When the monster's up, that's up. But when the monster's down. Go. I was hoping. So what do you think of this one? Um, this game is a really good game. So what do you think of the, the C64? Um, it's really fast. Um, it's really good um, for playing games on and it's, it's super fun. As you can probably see, this is what it's all about. And it's what we were when the original Commodore 64 was launched. I mean, most of us were between sort of maybe 7 and 16 or so when these were launched. So this is what we would have been doing. And that proves that the basic machine is very good. And this is a very good recreation of the Commodore 64. And it still has a place today. And the software from the 64 has a place. If the game's good, it's good. And so I'm going to move on to the sound just to kind of clarify whether or not this machine, the um, UC64, is using the same subset as the SID chip. So does it emulate the original SID chip or is it the later one? So let's have a look and we'll use probably Marcus's favourite C64 game, the which is Monty on the Run. So we're going to start now with the original Commodore 64. Now, if you listen to the um, C64 one, you'll hear the start of the tune at the end of this clip, so you can reference it, okay? So you've heard two small clips of the... SID tune, which was for Monty on the Run, and at the start of the first clip was the original Commodore 64, and at the end of the second clip was where the original Commodore 64 clip started. So you, you've got kind of a continuity thing, so you can hear the transition in both parts. Now they both sound reasonably similar to the ear but what I did is um, I took the time, went through it frame by frame, snapshot by snapshot, and the results are kind of startling. They've either done a really good job of recreating the um, SID on this, or they've actually 
recreated the original Sid because I found a clip on both of them which were identical in range, in tone, in hertz, everything. The exact same point as well. It wasn't randomly plucked out of another part of the um, you know the the tune itself. So at the same position on two separate clips from two what were different machines the 64 original and the new c64 and they match up really close and either side of the the tune or either side of the snapshot that i took they weren't far out at all so let's have a quick look at this and i'll show you what i mean so if you look at this one we have the channels on here okay the the two we're interested in is the two nine 296 almost changing to 7.8 hertz and the 522.0 hertz okay because if you look at the graph underneath of the the voices they are very very tightly packed now that's on the original commodore 64 if you go over to the new c64 you will see exactly the same tightly packed notes slightly out probably a, not even a millisecond out but you know it's as close as you can really realistically get and the values are the same they are almost identical 295.6 and 522 and again you've got the same on the original one and um, it's that close together that you, you wouldn't be able to call it and you would never hear any difference and at the end of the day it's not a hundred percent proof that they actually emulated the original SID chip but it's probably as close as you're ever going to get to the original SID chip under emulation okay so it's um it was quite a short part to the video but it took a long time to try and get to the bottom of this um you know whether the emulation is close to the original sid chip i mean it sounded it and um for want of a better you know explanation it would have been to most people's ears um spot on really so trying to match up everything everything i did it was always kind of a tiny tiny bit out every time i looked at every single note every single frequency every single graph and it was always probably kind of a millisecond out but i guess that a lot of that was to do with the timing on the machines because I'm kind of guessing that the the emulated 64 is slightly behind an original Commodore 64 and it seemed that way by when I was trying to match up the tunes even if you um, superimpose them on top of each other two start points they were ever so slightly I mean you could barely hear it you know when it was playing but it was evident that it was slightly out probably you know, you know maybe a millisecond or so really it's not a lot but it's enough to kind of throw graphs out and timings out and so on but when you judge it by the frequencies and the frequency points where they are rolling over from one to another as they you know dance around creating the tune every single one of them that i checked against the timeline came back as being ever so slightly laggy but not by a whole lot but when you took that lag away the frequencies matched up and the frequencies all the way through matched up and that to me is not a hundred percent proof as i said that um the emulation was on the original sid chip but it's almost there and um you know you'd never be able to tell 
um, if you basically play the games or play the sounds or play anything that the Commodore, original Commodore 64 could run and play and execute and the C64 running, play and execute you wouldn't notice any real difference whatsoever so I think they've done a really good job on this um, and I'm kind of guessing you know people will nitpick at things and people will have their own opinions and you know they'll some people will always go for the older hardware as the best and so on but you know reliability wise if you want to use something going forward this isn't a bad way to go and it also saves your classic machine 37 plus years old you know from causing problems and from you know eventually expiring and needing expensive work to remedy it so Ah, the C64 is a good machine, um, you know, and I'm I'm almost certain that from region to region anyway, there are timing differences, which there are on computers, but especially when they're relying on PAL or NTSC or CCAM and so on. Um, so there were always timing issues, and you get that with any sort of games console as well that was designed for different regions and different scan rates and different video systems and so on so I'm not wanting to kind of really destroying people's work unless you know it's kind of proper you know constructive criticism and um, but as a whole there's not really much you can say that's bad about this machine but there's an awful lot you can say that's good and for me, that, that's all you need really going forward, okay? So thanks for watching, thanks for listening, and I hope you subscribe and we'll do some more in the future, okay? Thanks a lot.